Okay, we left off configuring our view app. Uh, I hope you made it through. It was a little bit advanced, uh, but a bit essentially for me it was anyway, because I'm not 100% used to JavaScript frameworks and doing all this, you know, wrapper stuff. But uh, if all goes right, we should have a way to hook into our Axios methods and wrap it within these instances that have our data we need from our JWT sessions, controllers, and authentication. All that said, I want to define our routes. Um, for first, we're gonna start with a basic sign-in route to get things rolling, and then set up our app instance with view. So I have our router in index, or basically in your view app, if you go into router and then index.js, we're gonna start there. Uh, I would do wanna set up a mode called history. It kind of lets the URL actually identify with the route you're going to. Uh, if you don't set that, you don't see our your URL update. So it's kind of annoying if that isn't the case. But it's as simple as just adding that. Uh, so what I want to do is set our initial route to path uh, just the forward slash, which will be our root route. And I'm going to call this name sign in. And this will be the name of the component you make uh, anytime you create a new, a new view component. So in this case, I'm going to call it sign in and save that down so we have something to work with. Uh, in this file, I need to actually import that file, which we haven't created yet, but I'm going to go ahead and do that in a second. So I'll do sign in from uh, a shorthand here. You can do the out sign. It refers to the source directory in your view app. Uh, so let's say components and then sign in. We do need the, the actual, what's the word, suffix of that file name. So with view, you can have single file components, and that's what dot view files are which I think is really cool because it allows you to keep things contained and componentize like hardcore. So that's, that's awesome. So I have this sign in view file and each single file component consists of a template, a uh, script value essentially, and styles if you want them. So I'm going to create sign in and it's gonna look something like this. So you start with the template. I'm gonna have a script block and since I'm using uh, Tailwind, I'll make use of it over any actual scope styles. If you do want to use your own styles, you can just define them here. Um, and to make them completely scoped, you can do that by typing scoped here. Uh, so that's only available to this given component. So I'm going to avoid that. Feel free to do what you want. So I'll start just by doing some basic HTML here. I'm going to have a div with the class uh, max width small. Uh, margin auto and margin top and bottom would be eight. For any view component, you need one root containing block element. So you can't have another div like this cause view to bork basically. So keep, keep it contained in a one div or section or whatever HTML element you're using. So class will be border padding of 10 rim, I think. Um, border gray light shadow rounded. If you're not familiar with Tailwind, I do plan to do some uh, actual series based around it coming up. I think it's a great framework to reach for if you're looking to scale CSS. It doesn't solve all the problems with CSS, but it does, I find, keep you from writing the same like new styles over and over and over, which ends up with a lot of bloat. So I've found um, at least this pattern of utility first to be very very uh, refreshing, even though your HTML starts to look kind of monstrous. To each his own, though. All right, so our, this component is going to be com compromise of a form, essentially. And since it is a sign up view, that makes sense. Um, with view, there's directives and events you can hook into. So the niceties of that allow you to just do things like submit.prevent. And then we'll actually call a method around that, which I'll define in the script block below when we get to it. And then if there are errors, I'll do a class of, I'll just do text red. And you can do vif error. Basically, if there are errors, show this div, otherwise don't. 
and then render the error. Okay, and then within this form element, we will have two divs. Uh, one's gonna be, I'll just start with the actual containing element and then I'm gonna have a label and call it email. I'm gonna give it a class of label. So this isn't part of Tailwind, this class. This is what I defined here. So if you haven't included this, be sure to. Otherwise, you can style it however you want. So the label is going to be email address. And then we need input. Text by default, I'm going to use email uh, just because. And we need a V model. So this is view magic going on here. And we can call it email. And I'm going to give it a class of input. Again, that's being referenced in here right there and uh, for Gren since we're using a label it's you would typically assign an ID so the label knows it's semantic I guess you could say uh, we could do a placeholder too for Gren so Andy at webcrunch come cool so that's our first block I'll go ahead and copy that and save some time uh, this one will actually be a password field And we will call it that. Same with the model. And I'll just leave a placeholder off this one. Okay, on top of that, we need a button to submit the form, though we have, if you looked at the very beginning, I put a dip dot prevent, which essentially the view is smart to know to prevent actual submission of the form uh, by default. So that's great. I don't have to actually dive into the DOM and tell the form not to submit. You can just add that attribute and be done but it is still gonna submit. So we're gonna do a class and sorry for all these classes, but it will look better. So font bold, px4, rounded, cursor pointer, no underline. I don't know that it would have one, but it's okay. Background green. I think I went with uh, hover dark block width full padding Y is four text is white items are center I don't think justify center I don't have it set to be flex so that's interesting I have that but it's okay uh, this will essentially say sign in and then below we'll use our handy router view router to uh, it kind of defines its own HTML element so we can hook into it I'm just gonna give some spacing there but it'll be router link close it the same uh, and then you go to you will actually pass the path so sign up in this case so sign up and then we can just give it a class of link, which is another class that I find in my main CSS file. All right, so that's the basic template. We'll probably kind of copy that and move it over to the sign up template too to save some time. But what really needs to happen is some logic. By default, you need to include export default as an object that allows you to include it in other files. And we need to give it a name at the minimum. So sign in. Then, because we have models on this, we need to pass a data. And view will, the CLI will bork if you don't put a space. So we'll return an object and we'll pass in the models we've used. So email, password, error. And I'll just go down the line. So on view components, you can have a method called created. And that's essentially saying when this thing is mounted, do this. So we're actually going to check if the user signed in at that given moment. So we'll call a method called check. And then there's one called updated too. So we'll do the same thing. So these are all defined below in a object called methods, which is where you do a lot of the, the logic you need to do things in the app uh, or in the component. So sign in being one.
and we'll say this dot http host http plain and we get this if you remember back so we hook into view axios as http and then get that property and then we can post to sign in make sure you have a forward slash so this is going to our api so remember the route we made in our config routes so sign in and it's a post that's what it's looking for okay so with that we can go and pass in the email or an object i should say which is email this dot email and password just this dot password so then we could do it then which we get a response back from and then an arrow function we could say this dot sign in successful and we'll say response and then if there's an error we'll catch that and do error which this is what's being called here and then being referenced here so anything we get back we can actually uh, append to the view So then that's the initial sign in. We need to sign in successful, which we called right here. It doesn't exist yet. So we can say successful and we'll be passing in the response, which we can do stuff with in this case. So we could say if response dot data dot CSRF. So if it doesn't equal, we'll say this dot sign in failed response return so back out if the csrf token doesn't actually match and then if it is we can set local storage to we get this variable by default by the way our browser's api has it so s so csrf um, would be set to the response dot data at csrf and then we can set sign in true and this dot error will clear out and then this dot router we can hook into view router and redirect and we'll actually go to records basically if the user logs in that's where i want them to go Okay, so sign in failed is the method we call that we didn't define yet, so we'll have to do that. So we'll do error. You see, we, we have that here. Um, so the response is what's being passed in or actually right here. Uh, so we'll get that back and can do what we want with it. In this case, we're gonna do a similar check we did in our um, back end axios setup so it's going to look like this it might look familiar equals uh we'll say error dot response and error dot response dot data and error dot response dot data dot error be that or nothing return nothing um, okay so i think they prefer single quotes and then we can if that is the case we'll say delete local storage dot csrf and delete the signed in as well Okay, so one more, and this is the main one that we call when we create the component. So check signed in, and we're gonna pass in nothing. So we'll just say, we'll do an if local storage dot signed in. We'll just do the same replace the route. 
and go to records. Okay. So coming from Rails, this is a lot of logic just to do basic stuff. Um, that's the beauty of Rails in itself is it just handles it for you. I don't have to go through all this to get just a simple authentication set up. So there's pains and pros and cons of every route you take. Okay, so sign in, that lets us at least set up this component. I'm hoping I typed everything correctly. Um, if so, we've got our signed in component here. Let's see if we have import Axios from Axios. Unexpected semicolon, double check for errors. I think in our backend folder. No, I didn't mean to do that. Ah, oh, it shouldn't be in quotes. This should be its own na name. So path, I forgot a comma there on our routing. Go back to the router and put a comma. Uh, it looks like I got something here as well. I think I forgot this. Let's double check that. Something's up here. And that's why this isn't red, but it should be. Or it should be white, actually. All right, I think it's just a, a general typo. Um, so ESLint, of course. Oh my god. Um, eight spaces, but found six return. So I have some indentation issues. So ESLint is kind of a bitch with this, but I finally got it running. I had some indentation issues with my backend file, so uh, hopefully your linter catches them and tells you what to do. It takes a while to get it right, but essentially, look at our app. We have liftoff, at least. We have a component. It's rendering um, on our defined path. Uh, in Chrome, we could see it live with the view uh, dev tools. So we've got our app and we've got a sign in component and on it, we've got email password and it seems to be working. So password, cool, cool. So in the next videos, I think I'll scaffold out the other components. Uh, hopefully they go a little quicker than this video, but um, I can't promise anything because there's a lot of logic going on. So we'll work on the sign up controller or the sign up um, component next and uh, various other components that belong as the just main views and um, records and artists, which we'll finally get into the real data we were after. So. I will see you in the next part. All right, guys, peace. Hello Rails is my new course on Ruby on Rails. I'll teach you Ruby on Rails from the ground up. Visit hellorails.io for more information.